So you talk about memory, right? memorizing stuff. Then you, you, all you do is, you know, store it. And the phone figures out how many times you're frequently asking certain questions. What should be in the top of the memory? What should be in the middle? What should be at the bottom of the memory? It's going to record that information for you at your back end call. So you led me to the next thing, which is we talk about today, right? What is all this IOTs or Internet of Things that we're talking about? The Internet of Things is nothing but all these devices around you. So tomorrow, let's say you want to know, you know, how bad your TV is. Is it falling apart? Is it becoming an old TV? You know, now I have the latest TV is coming through. There's going to be information already sitting in the device that's going to be connected to your network. And it's going to dump the information to you and say, you know what? Looks like the LEDs are dying on this. So you probably have the maximum probabilistic life of two months to replace it. Same thing with the refrigerator. It's monitoring the health, how well the condition of the temperature in the inside of the refrigerator is. Is it able to pull the temperature down? Is the compressors are bad? So that information is not only going to relate to you, but it's also going to start relating the information to the device manufacturer saying, you've got a problem with this device. In fact, that's, that's one of the things that we're doing with Party at Cloud, since you know, we talk about Internet of Things and what we're doing about the Internet part, is we tell the device manufacturers how many of their devices are being used by different hospitals, what's happening with each one of the devices, is it healthy, is it really doing things right? So we put in a lot of information for the device manufacturer to manage these devices. Same thing is going to happen to all of you. So your telephones, right? Everything is going to get connected. And that's how the whole Internet of Things is going to be. It's a web of devices all around you that without your own awareness are constantly helping you, assisting you, monitoring you, and performing your everyday existence and lifestyle. The question is, is AI assisting you in executing stuff on a daily basis? I mean, is it an assisting technology? Yes, and in future, maybe even guiding you. Right? Today, it's in a suggestive mode. In fact, what happens today in AI is, most of the times, you have to decide on the kind of data you're going to feed it. So you take the data, you clean up the data, and then you feed it in the engines and then it comes up with a model at the end of the whole AI part, which is called supervised learning. But again, the objective is eventually for it to become unsupervised. That's what we're talking about, neural networks. A lot of research is going into that part. But irrespective of, you know, for it to learn German, for example, if for us it will take months to do it, but it's going to have such quick knowledge just by listening to the sounds and emotions of the people and reactions, you just can pick up a language probably in a few minutes, as against us, taking a few months to learn language. So where we are is we are at the very basic level of AI. And we have just begun to create, aggregate massive information with big data, like the Facebook of the world, like the Google searches of the world. Good question, good point. I was just trying to say some of the basics I was thinking about. For you to really plan to learn the language very well, it probably will take years. Similarly, even for computers, even if you put artificial intelligence, it has to get exposed to the language to learn it. But some of the basic stuff, like watching a TV show, you probably could pick it up in no time. But for us, watching a TV show and picking up the language would take a lot longer. So I think eventually, I feel, based on the computation power of some of these computers, based on how complex and how well these neural networks are designed, we will be slower than computers. Because you talk about huge horsepower, huge networks, and huge neural networks. They'll get much faster than we can. So the challenge, of course, you know, one of the thing is, do you think they'll supersede us and take us over? That's a question I have no answer to at this point. I think we're still at the very rudimentary level of where we are with this stuff. Right? What about something else? What about big data? Anybody that can give me examples of big data that they can see on a day-to-day -day existence? Over your applications? Google Maps? Yeah, Google Maps is huge amount of data. You're talking about worldwide maps, and that will continuously change. 
Oh, Google search engine, absolutely. It's crawling the whole world and creating huge data that you're using every day. But think of some other thing that's not there. I want you to come up with answers of what you can create. The cloud. The cloud is, of course, massive information, but application. Something that, will, something that you guys do on an everyday basis that you can make it better. What do you guys do every day? You go to school, come back, you learn stuff at school, then you play games, you do Snapchat, Instagram, what else do you guys do at home? Twitter, tweets. But anything else that you can make yourself more efficient? Anything that can make you more smarter? Watch okay, he watches YouTube too. <laughs> <laughs> so, any of these applications, for the matter, YouTube, right? We talk about AI applications, just like TV channels. You could, YouTube already does this for you. It monitors and sees what kind of shows you watch. It builds a profile for you. As soon as you log into YouTube, it knows your profile. It says, these are the suggested shows for you. And that is profile. That is, talk about it. You've got human, so many people logging into YouTube all over the world. That's massive. Data. And it's modeling that whole intelligence to create a profile. Right? But let's say, what else, what else today, when you go to school, what do you guys do? You listen to the teacher's lecture. He talks about different things. Do you think if you had a person who's teaching you, assisted by the global knowledge of so many good teachers all around the world that said, if you talk, these are the kind of kids that are sitting in your classroom. And if this is the way you talk, they make great grades. Yeah. Right? They, you know, just watching the professor or the teacher, imagine the system coming and telling him, you know what, this kid likes to be taught this way, this kid likes to be taught this way. So for this class to get most effective education, this is the way the teacher should be teaching. These are the topics to pick up. What do you think about that idea? Teacher bot. Teacher bot. Now for you, each one of you, once you go home, man, I hate this physics thing. I'm going to take this you know, advanced physics and I don't get it in time. Anything about it, I don't understand. What if there was a system that already knew how you exactly like to learn and taught you that same physics and you got that in a few minutes? Right? These are all things that are going to happen. It's in your hands to create it. It's practically the ideas are there. It's not that difficult. You can make it happen. Each one of us has the same signature. Each one of us has things to Does things to But the system that can learn about you and the computer systems can cater to your needs by providing the information that you have. Does that make sense? Okay. So, I want you to think, you know, these ideas that are dropping in your head. We talked about artificial intelligence, we talked about big data, we talked about IOT, Internet of Things. These are all ideas that if you start observing on a day to day basis and what you do on a daily basis, you can see several applications coming up everywhere. Right? So, making friends, we talked about teaching and learning stuff, we talked about even Instagram and Snapchat, you could actually. The system came up and told you, you know what, this is the best friend for you to Snapchat because he seems to like you a lot based on emotions and reactions. In fact, what's surprising, you know, I, I love playing tennis, so I was watching the US Open and it surprised me because, you know, I was watching the today of course right now, the finals, probably just finished to get a chance to watch it. But yesterday I was watching and the game was watching. You know what it does the system today? Even before each player gets on, IBM's Watson thing is really this great intelligence thing. It says, for this player to win the game, he has to serve at 82% first serve that win the percentage points for first serve. Similarly, for the other player, it says, he has to return the second serve and at least win 54% of the second serve points in order to win the game. This is, mind you, based on the historical data of how both of the players have played and what is the tilt that can happen to make the player soon. So anything that you want, you can model it. Anything that you want to achieve, you can model that. And you can build it the way you want to in order to achieve what you want to achieve. And build an intelligent system attached to it. Fair enough? Any questions? I want the questions now that we've just been talking. So what do you think about artificial? Uh, 
So you could have a fridge that like scans whatever is already inside, and then if you're running low on something or you threw it out, it'll detect the absence and send you an alert so that you have to go purchase that. Perfect idea. I love it. So just imagine, you know you know what stuff is lacked up in your refrigerator. It knows which one is getting depleted, maybe your vegetables are, your milk is getting done. And she talked about even sending a message to I would actually send it directly to the grocery store. So the milk came back and filled the refrigerator up. You don't have to worry about it. Everything is maintained for you. You know, you always, when you come home in the refrigerator, there's milk for you, there's yogurt for you, you got fruits, vegetables, whatever you want. The refrigerator is self-smart artificial intelligence system again. Self-contained. Here's the light. I love the idea. So everybody knows Amazon Echo. Yeah. Amazon Echo. Uh, this application is being used in the world. So taking your idea, keep it put, you know, set some scanners on the on the Amazon Echo, and put inside the refrigerator, and program because I have scanners. I can see the barcode, and I can just hide me, and I can create, do some ordering. So maybe that's one of the pilots you can build. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, there, you can also have like, an app or something that uh, tells you like where when somebody's coming to your house. Like if you're not there, um, uh, there's this app uh, called Ring where like there's uh, on your doorbell there's like a camera that like tells you every time like someone's coming to your door or like um, any motion that's there in case like if you're not at home or like you're in a car. That's a great idea too. So she's talking about putting a camera on the doorbell. It's a great idea. But what if you actually track the person's friends, all your friends' GPSs, and based on your motion, as somebody is approaching the house, even a few miles away, you're getting closer, but a mile or so, and you're taking it out to your house, it sends a message to you saying, this person is going to be home in a few minutes. Absolutely, yeah. your, your phone is tracking yeah. itself. Okay. Google Drive, I mean, I think you know, even the Maps does it, but I didn't know it was actually there sending information out. What I mean is Google Maps and APIs. APIs. You Google Maps out and you tell us to track, it tracks, but you don't have to have it. Exactly. So today, for example, Google Maps, today, if you go, it says, based on the time it says, it takes you 20 minutes to go home. Because you're leaving the office around 6, every day at 6.30, it says, you've got 20 minutes, the traffic is heavy over. Those kinds of things, but that can be easily adapt to this. Snapchat handle. Oh, cool. So the Snapchat simply has an application where it tells you whether the headphones are connected or not. What else? I want some the kids to give me some input. Anybody? You're missing out on the action game. You want to take a stab at what do you think about it? Go ahead. Good idea. So you know that information she said, why not, if you're going to monitor the contents of the refrigerator, you find out whether it's organic, is it healthy for you or not, it automatically tells you whether the food is healthy for you. And what you can do to make yourself eat more healthy. In fact, you can send that information to the doctor saying that this person may be eating very unhealthy, you've got to get him on the right track. Absolutely. So, so uh, in a refrigerator, even apple, right? So I'm going to add a little bit to blockchain. So just like Sunil talked about it. 
today, when you take any object or even yourself, and you're talking about information about yourself, but you you have multiple doctors that you go to. You go to a primary care physician, you go to a pulmonologist, you go to a cardiologist, right? Or you know anything that you can think of. Today, there's a lot of discussion about how do we have interconnectivity, how do we move the information from one place to the other. Instead of that, they made life very simple. They have created something called blockchain technology, where it's a standard way of tracking the information related to the object that you have in hand with all the other institutions that have information about it. Just like Sunil just talked about, let's say you have an apple, right? Washington Reds. Let's say you like Washington Reds apples. And the Washington Reds traveled from Washington to went to Reno, from Reno and got trucked up to San Jose, and from San Jose to Saratoga. But the barcode information now is with every trucking company. It's also with every warehouse that it walked through before it got here. You, as a blockchain technology connected person, can track exactly where it went and how it went. So in case you want to track. That is blockchain technology. It's very simple because, you know, today, if you want to send money, let's say you want to send money from your account to your friend's account, you'll have to specifically, explicitly tell the bank to transfer the money to that account. And then once it goes there, that money again may have to be moved to somewhere else. But there's no proper history connecting. Every bank has their own record of what money came in and what went. But if you had blockchain technology, the complete history, if you take your account, it shows you the entire blockchain of how your money flowed between different banks, or banks excuse me, and how it, it came back. Right, so that is the concept of blockchain. In fact, that we also get introduced to a little more. I think the most apt one I found was in healthcare, and also in financial transactions, but healthcare is very important because they're all disconnected. Your primary care doctor has his own record, your cardiologist has his own record, a nephrologist has his own record. You need something that gives you your record, which is an integration of all the records that are with everybody else. Right? So, IoTs we talked about, refrigerators, you know, Nest devices, all these are different kinds of devices that are there out there. Right? We talked about big data, voluminous data that's coming through. We talked about artificial intelligence. We also talked about machine learning in the sense talk about how from the big data your system knows how to learn and become better at it. Because that was the first question. He said, what are these error prone stuff? What are all these algorithms that are error prone? Then the system needs to know how to learn from the error system. How does it learn so that it becomes the better artificial intelligence system? And that is deep learning, machine learning, the data that you have start learning from it so that you don't make mistakes again, or you learn to do it better. Either case, that's about deep learning and machine learning. And you also learn about blockchain. Right? Yeah? For blockchain, Yes, there is something that links the whole thing together. Right. So for financial, I think it's a different financial sector information. A health record is mostly patient name and date of birth and the employment and stuff. And also you have to have access. They won't let everybody into that blockchain automatically. So you have to be a verified institution that can access the information. Plus you have a unique identifier. So you can then scan everybody that's there and you have to pick up the information that's still available. So that's the debate that's been going on. In fact, one of the sessions you'll see we have also an encryption and data security. So the data encryption and security has been being pushed forward very aggressively. And security is a you know, very, very important thing implicates of all of this. And Equifax, I don't know if you read it two days ago, or even it was yesterday. There are 143 million records leaked out about patients, I mean, people's credit history. TransUnion, Equifax, which is the third one. They had three credit reporting agencies, and one got hacked for three months, and they did not realize that. So that kind of security is a big issue. And also, you know, privacy really goes to dogs, you know, question about it. As a result of that, what's happening is that a lot of institutions that are coming up now, 
that are saying you need to dial your information online, they want to charge you 50, 60 bucks a month, they will monitor your information that's online, what's out there, to what extent they can do it, I'm not quite sure yet. But that model is also evolving, just starting to evolve at this point. Huh. I had another comment for artificial intelligence. So um, maybe there's a robot or a camera that uh, you can put in your house and then it can um, watch you and then it can uh, probably like, uh, like um, find, like um, for example, if you have a job that you type a lot and your hand hurts or you need like a wrist display, maybe it can prescribe that to you or you can tell you, oh, you can get a wrist at this store or you can, uh, you should, should get a risk. Absolutely. <laughs> Great idea. So there's a camera sitting in and a computer behind that watching you to see what you're doing all day. It's also going to project to you that you're going to get, you know, you're going to harm your wrist, you're going to hurt your elbow, and it's going to tell you that's not a good way to do it. I think that's a great idea. And also not only that, if you're typing too much, you can also suggest, you know, there's a faster application which you can use in order to make yourself better and stop typing, typing less. All those are good ideas. And one thing I would add to what he said, you know, when you're getting hot, I will start driving cars, right? Apple has a car, and Google has a car. It's also a tool, a technology that is driving the car, it's a certain way. Or AI, a lot of people get that. They get a very bad computer. And so the, the, the car they do, it's all instructions from that big program that's running on the car. Right? So big self-driving cars. Do you want to be the first person who wants to drive it? Good. The risk taker, I can tell that. <laughs> but yes, self-driving cars are being tested, being driven today. But a lot of fun. Imagine, what do you think a self-driving car is going? Anybody? If the car is self-driving, what do you think it is looking at? Give me a few parameters. What do you think it's going? All validated. So he's talking about a self-driving car has to know how many lanes, how wide is the road. Number one. Second, are there white lines demarcating the lanes so you know which lane to stick to? Next, just look at the signs. Is it deer crossing? Is there a you know, speed limit of only 20 miles an hour? Right? And I think of course the good part is we have Google and we have GPS is now. So we it probably already know its location, and based on the location, we have the speed at which you have to go. But you have to look at the construction points. I mean, is this going to be construction on one lane? Do I have to move to the next lane? Right? How far is the front vehicle in front of me? How fast can I move? Is there a bank? And what I'm saying is, at the end, you know, these are all parameters that you can, as a common sense, just your neural system today, when you sit in the car and start driving the car, all of it is doing by itself. Now all that has to be emulated in the self-driving car to become more sophisticated. And, can e and what I'm saying is it's, it's tool. It's no rocket science at the end of it. Because we are very smart beings and we can achieve it. I guess um, two more minutes. We are running out of time, so we're almost done with it. But I think you'll have lots of fun. I think you know you should come, learn. In fact, there's going to be hands-on things. So let me take, take you to the next, next slide. So this is how we're going to have, right? I mean, we, today we covered about, I'm sorry, that's uh, the first session. The second one is going to have big data. So we're going to talk about more into big data. We're also going to give you hands-on experience on uh, Python and uh, Google BigQuery. In fact, some of you is going to be teaching that. The next two sessions are about machine learning. And then you're going to have two sessions on artificial intelligence, and blockchain technology, security, and encryption. And you're going to have a lot of hands-on programming. Again, the whole idea is for you to have a presentation discussion and then have hands-on learning. So we want you to learn. Right? And the whole idea, I mean, it's not like you're going to become great AI programmers and all that. The idea is that you get a feeling for what all these are 
so you can play around with it, create your own stuff, get, but get a good fundamental understanding of the whole technology. Really. Does Avinash have There's a video, but I think you know I covered most of it, so I'm going to skip through all these YouTube videos that I set up. So you already identified this. Some of the AI applications, City was one of them, right? Alexa is the other application. We talked about it. Tesla has got some great intelligent stuff, preventive maintenance, it automatically detects an engine and decides you know, when it's time to take it for a spin, when it's time to take it for a repair, when it's time to fill the gas. All those are Tesla based. You want a Tesla? Me too. <laughs> the next one is Netflix and Netflix is having to the same thing, just like we talked about YouTube and all that stuff. It auto profiles it, tells you, it sees what you observe and what you do, and then starts giving you options for you to sell the movies that you can find. And Netflix. Oh, I, I'm sorry, thank you for not Netflix. But this is the uh, Nest, exactly. So Nest is like all your devices that you have, right? At home. It automatically observes what temperatures you set the thermostat up and down. It learns based on what kind of temperature conditions you have during the day. It auto switches the thermostat for you. You don't even have to bother. You train it a few times and after that it learns. So you don't have to tell it, go, oh, it's too hot now, I want to change the thermostat. So it observes how you want the thermostat set in the automatic programs and stuff. All these are examples of small AI applications coming from right now. But you have several like this. All will be tied together. And you'll have a very smart home. You know? <coughs> By the time your generation is you know, in 40s and 50s, you'll have, you just walk in and the whole house will change to what you need. The whole house is going to behave the way you want. It's going to give you the food that you want. I mean, you guys are going to have much more fun than we did. We were doing all the hard work and grunt work, but you didn't get the, the fruits of all the hard work you put together. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I think it's uh, we are done with the time. So most of this Python programming or Google BigQuery you can do all in the browser. So if you have a computer with internet connection, then we will have a lot of fun. Okay? So in fact, you know, if you want to run Python, you don't know Python, there are a lot of online Python compilers. JW.com, Nifty.it, Google it, play with Python, run some programs and I'll teach you how to do it. It will work. Okay? Uh, so yeah, I'll send out an uh, email to everyone uh, with the, the slide, uh, slides over here and then also some reminders on what to bring for next week. And if you're not in the email group, come talk to me after. I can uh, if, just give me your email and I can add you to the group. And we also have a, a Facebook group. It's facebook.com slash groups slash Silicon Valley Coders slash Silicon Valley Coders. So that would be a good mechanism to communicate. Bye. Sri Ram Paitya deserves a big round of applause. Thank you for kicking it off for us. Appreciate it. And Sunil Zapat is basically spearheading this effort. You know, he's basically he'll be teaching the, the big data session. I call him the big data guru of Silicon Valley. But he'll be actually choreographing this for the rest of the whole semester. You know, with, we have about six speakers, and he'll be keeping every everyone sort of in tune with uh, what the expectations are and all the different challenges, your feedback and input will be critical. So please connect with Sunil and also with Shiva in terms of how you how you would like to tweak the whole model. Please don't leave because the next next session that we have is actually a college admission made easy. So if any of if you have students who are considering applying to college, an eighth grader, ninth grader, and the college admission process is looming in your mind, I suggest you stay back. It's uh, about an hour and a half session, 90 minute session, but it will prove fairly useful in terms of providing simple data points as to what it takes 
for your child to apply to college. There are lots of changes happening, and so that is what we run through. In the next, we can start in exactly five minutes. So please uh, stay.